This is the way that I, I get to communicate with my kids. Is going hunting. You know, they put the phones down. We plan. We love them. If you're offshore, signal, so they're concentrated. But the phone fish. Well, it's getting taken away from us. Period. And that's why I'm here. Um, I have lost interest. I haven't caught a red snapper in probably eight years. And I've definitely asked them in here, who caught red snapper last year? Hold up your hands. In federal waters. Now we don't. Not very many. You know, a lot of a lot of you guys just it's not worth it anymore. We got boat manufacturers that can't sell boats. We got tackle stores that aren't selling tackle. They're not selling gas. Uh, we got fishermen that are standing out here and they, their, their hands are tied. I'm standing here for the charter guy. I'm a guy. I'm trying to fish every day of the year. It's time to go charter them. I want them to be able to go fishing, period. I, I don't want you tied down to four six days. Let's see the rest of the right now is what I'm talking about. Nine days, yeah. Well, the four heart, the charter guys, I think they get four, six days for right Four, six years. If you have the permit, that's right. You know, you got a special permit. Yeah, and then you got to buy some fish from someone else. Whatever. I mean, we got a red snapper out there right now that you can shake a stick at. So, uh, after I done some research and I'm reading everything, and I just come here getting screwed, period, hands down. <laughs> also, our kids are getting screwed. I mean, they're not getting to go fishing. They don't get to experience what God gave us. Our public resource has been privatized for people to get make profit on and not pay for it. There is individuals they get for every year. They get half of our fishery every year. And they get free. It's like if the National Forestry says, we're going to cut down half of this forest over here and I'm going to give it to you 50 guys for free. And y'all get to cut it down and sell it. Well, let me throw this in there. 40% of those people that are cutting down the forest don't even have a chainsaw. So they just got a gave to them, and then they're going to sell it to somebody with a chainsaw. That's the same thing here. Forty percent of these fishermen, that, of these 50, don't even have a commercial license. They could be somewhere else. They're not even in the fishing industry, and they're selling our fish. It's not right how it's set up right now. Unfair. The whole catch share experience to me when I'm reading about this stuff is totally unfair. You're supposed to be able to go for free out in the Gulf and go fishing with a commercial fisherman and help them catch their catch to sell. Well, right now, if you call Katie today, their fish is $8 a pound. Well, if you catch share experience, when you get back to the dock, if you want to take your fish with you, they're $16 a pound. Well, what about free? Doesn't sound free to me at all. Where's that extra $8 going for? Why is it empty? Well, they'll tell you if it's sushi grade or it's fresher than on ice. Baloney. It's not free. It's a loophole in a system that they've created for the laws to balance for them. These guys have came... I don't even need to read this anymore because I get irritated reading it. These guys have came together and they... Actually, they're super smart. They all banded together and started fighting one fight, Right? They put their money in one spot and they're fighting for one thing. Well, the recreational anglers, they're not fighting. You got five over here, ten over here, and they're all fighting in different little spots. And we're not all together as one. And that's one here. I think everybody needs to come together. Every congressman needs to see what we got standing right here in this room right now. People are tired. We're getting our resource taken from us. And, and, and we're standing by and, and we're just taking it. They get to fish 365 days a year. We get to fish nine. And I heard this year they're planning on us fishing seven. Really? I mean, come on. Really? It, it absolutely makes me furious that we're standing around and taking this. Does not make a lick of sense to me at all. We all have to come together. Everybody that's sitting here watching on the web right now, we all have to come together and fight as one. We need to vote as one. 
We don't need to. We don't need any more. We don't need this anymore. We need to vote as one in this room. We need to have everybody on the same list. We need to go. This guy's supporting our fight, and we're going to vote for this guy. And we're not voting for this one no more. So any congressman standing out here watching this right now, we're if you're not on our side, you're not going to be there no more. That is our objective. We're not going to have you taking money. See these commercial guys, they have this uh, defense fund, everything else. They have unlimited money. They go wine and dine them with credit cards. They get to fly all over. You'll see them in Capitol Hill up there taking them to dinner. Probably titty bars. Who knows? You know, let's be honest about it. They have unlimited funds to go wine and dine these people. Well, guess what? We ain't got the money, but we got the people standing here. Spin it around and show how many people standing here. And there's tons watching right now today. Oh, yeah. We are not going to stand around and take this no more. I get mad thinking about it. I mean, I'm furious. They're taking away from my kids, your kids. These charter guys, they're limiting them down to, oh, you can fish 40 days. What the hell is 40 days? I'm a guide. 40 days, I'm going to feed my family on 40 days. And then when they do, they're getting led in a direction right now that they're going to, they'll end up having to buy their fish that they take on those days. Because they're going to say, oh, guess what? There's no fish left. But you can buy them from us. We'll sell them. You're going to get the fish every day. It's already happening in Alaska. I'll let Tom tell you in a minute about the guy who just called us from Alaska, charter fisherman. He's having to pay $400 right now every halibut he puts on his boat on the catch share experience. He takes three people and catches three halibut. It costs him $1,200. It's going on right now, folks. I mean, if we don't stop it now, it's going to be grouper, amberjack. It's already going that way. They want the whole Gulf privatized to catch share. And if y'all don't pay attention to what's going on and we don't all stand together now, it's all going to get taken away, not just the snapper. This is not just about the snapper. Hell, they're selling speckled trout in Louisiana right now in the commercial fishery. Right now they're catching them and selling them in Louisiana. Well, next thing you know, it'll be in our bays. And we've done stood around and watched it go on. Enough is enough. We all have to join together as one and fight the same fight. And we have a plan for that. First off, they need to know how many damn people are actually fishing them right now. Everybody that buys a saltwater license is considered a red snapper fisherman. No, doesn't work. That means that everybody that's sitting into Texas City Dyke right now that don't have a boat, they're considered a red snapper fisherman. First off, we need to get the actual numbers. The duck stamp has been fantastic. Look at our ducks. Look at where our ducks are right now. Every year you go buy a license, you buy a duck stamp if you're going to hunt. They also ask you how many ducks did you kill last year. Then we start dealing with accurate numbers, not made up shit. And that's what they do. This whole, this whole deal that you just watched on here is made up numbers. They don't know what we catch. They just assume what we catch. Well, it's time to get down to facts. And right now you don't have a system for facts, so how can you even limit us right now? And that's where we're at. I'm standing here for my kids, your kids. I'm standing here for charter fishermen. I want y'all to fish every day. Listen to me. Don't listen to the poison going around. I want you to fish every day, and I don't want you to have to pay anybody for your fish. That's what I stand for. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Tom and uh, Warren Clark. And uh, thank you all all for coming here tonight. I mean, it really means a lot that you all are here. It means we're concerned, and I appreciate that. I'm glad other people are concerned like I am. Good news is he's not passionate at all about this situation. <laughs> My name is Warren Clark, and I've been asked to tell you a little bit about a group known as What Happened to Our Fish, who we are, and what we do. What Happened to Our Fish started as a group of just friends that realized recreational fishermen had no source of credible information on the mismanaged red snapper debacle in the Gulf of Mexico. Having no money, we went to social media with a Facebook page to inform fishermen what the circumstances were and to provide one central location where they could add comments and further information. Well, our Facebook page grew, and it grew, and it grew. 
After one year, we now enjoy over 1,850 followers that have liked our page, and we regularly reach over 20,000 readers on our major posts. Our reach now stretches the entire uh, north, south, east, and west of the Gulf Coast. We've got followers, active followers, participating with us through all the major coastal cities. I'd like to invite you, if you haven't already, to please visit the Facebook page. It is What Happened to Our Fish? Question mark. And stay abreast of, of this situation because it's a dynamic and moving the target. To further expand our reach to the general fishing public, we created a brochure. Several are on the tables here. Okay, thank you. Uh, we created a brochure, and there are several on the tables. So far, we have disseminated, just in this county, over 20,000 copies, and we have over 200 retailers who are making these available at or near their checkout counters. We regularly publish articles in newspapers and magazines, and we often speak to public groups, conservation groups, fishing groups, and the like. Turn okay. So, <laughs> scared me to death. Sorry. <laughs> so many of you have asked, how can you participate? Well, we'd be happy to have you join our email tree. With such, you'd be part of the inner circle on any new initiatives that we're beginning. Find out. Uh, you might find some new initiatives that we're beginning where you'd like to participate and be involved. If you're a retailer, we'd love to have you distribute our educational brochures. If you're active in a conservation, fishing, or business group, why not ask one of our people to speak to them? And if anyone here is a website guru, we need you. We're a group of all volunteers. But amongst us, there's not a one that's, that's capable of building a website, and we need one. So we need a volunteer, and if you can help us with that, please, please, please talk to me. Now, I would like to introduce this evening three friends of recreational fishermen. The first, and I'll have them uh, identify where he's sit standing, Shane Bonneau. Shane, where are you? Anybody see Shane? The, Shane holds a new position with the CCA Texas. He is the Director of Advocacy. He comes to this mission with 10 years experience with Texas Parks and Wildlife and we're thrilled to have that position and Shane with his experience as part of it. So welcome to the team. There is Chancy Mowry. Chancy, can you identify where you Chancy? Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. How do you work here? Where I look. Uh, Chancy is the franchisee publisher of Coastal Angler Magazine for this yeah. region. She is a huge advocate of you educational fishermen. A huge advocate. In fact, she has us write a full page every month to educate the general public on the time on any timely and legislative issues. Hopefully, page in every single publication, and we thank you for that, Chancy. She's our friend, guys. So, applause, if you will, for Chancy, because Coastal Anger has been a great ally to the recreational fishermen. The third person that I'd like to recognize is Bill Sargent. And Bill is right here. Could you let people see where you are? Bill, or Sarge, as he's known to his friends, recently has served as a supervisor of elections for Galveston County and previously served 20 years on Capitol Hill with the Department of Commerce. He's probably the only person here who's not a fisherman. But, unlike most involved in the political arena, he has taken the time to personally study the circumstance, interview people on all sides of the red snapper issue, and brought an analytical approach to the controversy. 
He is publishing an unbiased investigative report series in the Galveston Daily News. It will run for five consecutive days beginning this coming Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, this will be in the Galveston Daily News. If you do not have access to the Daily News, he shared with me that he posts these things on a website which he has also, which is Sarge, S S A R G E S dot com. So you could read it there as well. I may not agree with everything Sarge proposes, but I'm thrilled to see a guy from the political arena who, one, actually digs in to learn the issues from all perspectives. That's a switch. He determines his, his, his perspective without being influenced by large financial contributors. And he actually proposes resolutions that could be equitable for all sides of the controversy including caring for our public resource. After the meeting, I would hope that all of you would take a moment to introduce yourselves to these three dignitaries, to share with them your perspectives, and to make a new friend. My name is Warren Clark. Our group is What Happened to Our Fish. And now I'm honored to introduce a gentleman who's likely the most knowledgeable in the country on the Red Snapper debacle, Captain Thomas Hilton. Tom? Howdy. Thank you all all for coming to this. Uh, we, we really do appreciate uh, your concern and your interest. And what's really what we're trying to get out of this is to be sure that you sign the uh, list up front that you have for your email addresses so that we can keep you in the loop so we can disseminate information to you as we see it. And also at election time, we want to be able to educate you all on who is um, actually working in our best interest and who ain't. And it's time to get those guys out that aren't working in our best interest up in, the, uh, up in Washington, D.C. Um, you know, it all just kind of boils down to that we're to the point where there's forces out there that they don't like us going out putting the fish in our cooler for free. Those days are coming to an end soon if these guys get their way. We're going to have to pay somebody, whether it be Walmart for a fish tag or for a charter guy to take us out on his, his boat. But if we have a private boat, we're going to be out of, out of luck unless we pay for a tag. What they've done is they've pigeonholed us into a point now that we have so, less, so little access to the fishery that they're trying to just mafia-style coerce us into accepting whatever they want, us to, they want us to have. In this case, it's cat shares. And we can't... We don't need that. We don't want it. It doesn't work. Um, basically, they squeezed us down to the point where I asked Dr. Crabtree last year at a meeting, I said, hey, Dr. Crabtree, if we went to fish tags in 2016, how many tags would we get? He didn't even have to think about it. 422,227. Then I asked him, well, how many tags would that be per angler? He goes, well, I don't really know. We don't have that information. Well, let me tell you what. That's not even enough tags for the anglers in Florida alone to have one tag. Forget about us over here in Texas. We'd, we'd be out of luck. So if you go to fish tags, you're going to have, it's going to be a lottery system. You won't be, you know, zero to one tag per year is what we're going to get. Also, if you reverse engineer the numbers, and because we're in sector separation right now, and the, the private wrecks get 57% of the recreational allocation, and the for hire gets 42.7 or whatever it is. If they had gone to permit fishing quotas, or what they're pushing for the for hire captains, is what they call permit fishing quotas, where they tie this allocation to their permit. 
if they had fished under permit fishing quotas in 2016, you charter guys would not have gotten 44 days. Y'all would have had enough fish for 15 days. So yeah, you can fish year-round. Yay! That means you get customers out a little bit over one day a month. Is that what y'all really want? I mean, is, there's plenty of fish out there for all. Commercial, nobody's trying to get the commercial guys out of business. We think that they, they, they fulfill an important part of our socioeconomic fabric here. Uh, but they're driving the train here, and they're using millions of dollars from the Environmental Defense Fund and from all the free money that they're getting through cash shares. You know, the last time I checked, when the Gulf Council increased the TAC, the total allowable cash, if the commercial IFQ shareholders, the Red Snapper IFQ shareholders, if they took just that increase and leased out 100% of that increase, that equated to about $5 million a year that they could put toward legal funds to make sure that they keep this system in place. What did the recreational fishermen get? They got one fishing day, one extra fishing day. Who's going to win that fight? The other thing is when they went, when they reauthorized the Magnuson 10 years ago, they gave half of the snapper out there to these commercial corporations. And it's like what Steve said, it's like the federal government giving half the timber on our public lands to timber corporations saying, here, these are for free, you can do whatever you want to with them. The difference here that in the Gulf IFQ system is that this industry is different in that they're not required to pay a royalty to the nation for the privilege of harvesting our public trust resources. We all own those fish out there, all of them. They are American property, but they're harvesting these fish for free, not paying any royalties. Well, they claim that they pay a royalty, but it's a cost recovery fee, it's a 3% fee. So if you put it in perspective, if the, the dockside price of snappers is $4.75 a pound, 3% is $0.14 cents a pound is what they're paying. About 37% of the IFQ shareholders don't even own a commercial fishing permit. They take 100% of their quota that they've been given and they lease it out at $3.25 a pound. So the, they, put, they pay 14 cents a pound toward the program, but then they pocket $3.25 a pound in their pocket. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. On one side, they're not paying royalties, and on the other side, they're, co they're actually collecting our nation's royalties through leasing and putting it in their pockets. So that, now they're promising that to their the commercial, I mean, the charter guys, they're saying, hey, y'all can get what we got. So they're pushing for, for uh, catch shares, permit fishing quotas, IFQs, in the four hire side, and then fish tags here. Seasons and bag limits work fine. Uh, there's no reason to, do, to go to a hard cap like that because it's not going to be in anybody's best interest to do that. It's just all about the dollar. So in closing, I, I just want y'all to uh, consider we need to put our, our support behind uh, H.R. 3094 when it gets reintroduced to Congress, which would delegate management away from the National Marine Fisheries Service and to the states themselves. Um, we need to require that, that the uh, IFT shareholders pay for uh, the privilege of profiting from our harvest pub, pub, uh, public trust resources, and if we did this, we created a revenue stream of about $20 million a year just from that one, one side of the equation. That we put toward better uh, data, better assessments, whatever. On our side of the equation, I'm not just trying to say the commercial guys need to pay. I think we need to pony up 
And I think most of us, I know I personally would, this is my opinion, but I think we would be more than willing to pay 20 or 25 bucks a year for a stamp, like a duck stamp. And it's like when you go duck hunting, you better have that duck hunt, uh, that duck, duck stamp, if a game warden comes off on you. But let me tell you what, that duck stamp has been a, an incredible success story. They brought the ducks back, they, they generated this revenue stream, they were able to, to create habitat. Now the ducks are doing great. The government knows exactly how many duck hunters there are. And that's a big part of the equation that's missing here. They have no idea how many of us there are. So let's step up. I'm, I'm suggesting that we, we put our, our shoulders behind the duck stamp, or a, a snapper stamp. And that could raise another $20 million a year. I'm just estimating because nobody really knows how many there are. That's $40 million a year that we could generate, show the guys, show the government. This is how we fund it. We're self-funding our fishery. We want those dollars to come back to our fisheries and for our kids, because that's the main reason we're here. Because I see there's a big lock on the, day, on the gate for our children in the future. So thank you all again. I appreciate you all coming. And, you know, like I said, we just began. The, the name of this initiative, we're calling it Angler's Defense. This is the first meeting, and we're planning on having meetings across the Gulf of Mexico and up the eastern seaboard, and collecting email addresses and creating this database and getting a, a sizable, formidable foe for our, our opponents. Thank you. Hey, listen, uh, another thing that I became aware of, too, uh, to follow up with Tom, is that these Gulf Council meetings are over on the Gulf states, Alabama, Louisiana, Florida, Texas, very seldom. Um, but anyway, I'm told that, you know, the, the commercial guys are always there, like always fighting the same fight, and we may have no more than five recreational anglers show up to a meeting. It's always out of the way for, so we need help with that. Like I have people, I want to have representation. Like there's people in Alabama have been calling me, Florida. We need to all join forces. The ones that have time, we need to get, we need to get to these meetings and show we're there and we're mad. Right now, nobody's showing up, so they're just taking whoever's there. You know, they're making the laws for them. Well, that's the commercial guys. We need the recreational anglers together. If you can't go to the meeting, we have people that can go that can't drive. I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting there's a meeting April 4th, 5th, and 6th. The public can speak on 5th in Birmingham, Alabama. I would like to. Uh, if you can't go, chip in. Let's get a charter bus and take about 100 people there. Let's all split up some money. If you can't go, chip in some money. Let's get these people that have the time to go, to go there. Wear a shirt that says, I'm a recreational angler and I'm mad. You know, we're not going to take this no more. We need our faces in there and they need to know we're mad and we're not going to take it no more. So if you're watching via the web, you need to be, you, you need to be contacting me. If you're in Alabama at the next meeting, We'll meet you there at the gates. I need volunteers that want to go to Alabama right now. And I need volunteers to help pay for the bus to get them there. I've already had a few people. I got one $500 donation already. The bus, maybe you know somebody that has a bus. Maybe you own a bus. Uh, we need to get people there. I've had a lot of people say, hey, I can go. I just can't drive that far. So if you can help, help us. Uh, and and y'all may be standing out there going, I can do this. You know, I... We need it. We need all we can get. We don't have any money. All we have is concerned citizens want to fish, period. So this is a new deal. I mean, we are out here fighting for you guys. So if you want to help, let's get some people to that meeting on April the 5th and let's talk. So uh, with that being said, thank you all, all for coming. I hope to meet all of you all out here when we get done. And I uh, really appreciate you coming. Uh, this makes my heart warm, I'm telling you. So anyway... Uh, We'll have more announcements and more meetings and get, let's educate people on what's going on. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, also, if you have any questions, does anybody have any questions you want to address or ideas right now? We can do that right now. It's a good thing to be. Yes, sir. I've never, never spoke in a microphone in my life. Thank you for coming out. Okay, can y'all hear me? I have, I'm 53 years old. I live in New Caney, okay? I have been fishing the Gulf Coast since I was two. 
my mother passed away about four years ago, okay? Exactly one year after she passed away, I woke up one morning to listen to the Captain Mickey show. And during a commercial, there was a guy singing about picking up the trash in Texas. Okay, but well, that triggered a song in my head. And I'm not a songwriter, okay? In 24 hours, by the time the Captain Mickey show come on, the next morning, this song was in my head. And I would really like to sing it to y'all <laughs> so it can go viral. Because I know it will. And if you love fish, you're going to love this song, okay? okay? So y'all kind of bear with me just a little bit. Oh, Maybe even a hand clap, okay? I'm not a country songwriter, all my friends they know. But I wrote a song, you will sing along, and here's how it goes. Late last night, when I went to bed, God put a song in my head. And early this morning, when I got up, I grabbed my fishing pole and I headed for my truck. The weatherman said that it would be a good day. The sun's gonna shine, the wind's gonna lay, I'm going fishing. Yeah, 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 I'm going fishing. Yeah, yeah, I make a good pass and I might catch a bass, I'm going fishing. Well, I've been going fishing now since I was only two. My mother and father took me to the deep blue. About a year later, when I was in my threes, they opened up the gulf to the Vietnamese. <laughs> now, red snapper fishing is a federal crime. They're not their fish. They're yours and mine, so let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. You keep your line tight and you might feel a bite, but let's go fishing. Well, I've been snapper fishing now for most of my life. My father taught me and I taught my wife. And all these regulations we think is a shame. And Texas Parks and Wildlife is partly to blame. The federal government will take the rest. Cause red sniper fishing is at its best, so let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. You keep your line tight and you might, no, have a good time, but we might get a fine, but let's go fishing. Well, all these politicians we think is a joke. We'd love to take them all out on my boat. About 50 miles to my favorite spot But we couldn't guarantee they'd make it back to the dock So let's go fishing Yeah, yeah, let's go fishing And if they cared at all, they would change the law But let's go fishing Yeah, yeah Okay, now Within another 24 hours God put another song in my heart <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Go give him a hand. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Thank you, sir. Real deal. Good job. Good job. Hey, Sarge, are you in here still, Sarge? You want to say something for a minute or something? Here you go, Sarge. Um, all I can say is read the column. We spent about. Uh, I don't know, five weeks talking to people on the commercial side, the head boat people, the charter boat people, and recreational fishermen. We tried to pull together a reasonable approach to things and ask questions and, you know, we'd like your comments. So if you can't read it, you can look at it on the website, come see me before you leave and I'll give you a card and you can look at the website. Thank you, sir. Hey, did any of y'all have any questions or anything? No, no song, song uh, singers, four please. So, any questions? Come on. Come on. This here is uh, Charlie Everts here, expert at Tiki Island. He's a man from uh, Fish and Sea Park because he won it three times. I 
from Stafford. Uh, first of all, where's Warren? Warren Clark? Around here somewhere. He's got all this stuff together. Warren got involved it's with It's a My God, he put the head in his mouth and he's getting things done. Can you hear me? Warren Clark got involved in this a few months ago and he took the bit in the mouth and he's getting things done. Let me say one thing. I've been involved in this for about 40 years. And our biggest problem is us right here. We can sit around, we bitch to ourselves, we complain to our neighbors, we get on the internet board and we beat, but we don't do a damn thing. And if this meeting accomplishes one thing, you better get your butts together or we're gonna lose everything we got. All your friends, all your neighbors, any representatives you know, you better know what's going on. Otherwise, it's just almost over right now and it's gonna be gone for sure. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. The question is on the red snapper stamp. Are you proposing some kind of a season still and a bag limit along with the stamp? You know, uh, the question was if we get a, st a snapper stamp, do we, are we proposing a season and a bag limit? Um, you know, Personally, I'd like to see us go back to pre-IFQ uh, 2006. We had a 194-day season four-fish bag limit. Um, I'd like to go back to that. I'd like to see the charter guys and all the private wrecks being able to fish at least six months, but keep a two-fish bag limit and do a three-year exempted fishing permit, an EFP, and get the data based, you know, what, how, many, how many fishermen are fishing out of what port and where and how much are they catching after three years, then you can take that data and then transfer that management to the states. That's what I'd like to see happen. That's what we're pushing to do. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Listen, uh, this is this is all new. Here's how you contribute right now. We need a bus. The first thing we need is a bus for April the 4th. So if you have something you can put in the hat, great. If you have a card or a suggestion to help, put it in this hat just the same. All the advertising and what you've done here surely exceeds that. How can we contribute toward that? Uh, we're, we're taking donations to help fight right now, trust me. Uh, Sure, you can send a check. Absolutely, you can send a check. Starts right here. Look at this guy. This is going to help people get to the meeting right now. We're going to pass this around, and you can send a check. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you an address here shortly when we get done. Um, but I would love for you to help. Yes, sir. Buddy, I, I'm going to ask the same question that everybody out here is asking. We're all pissed off about what's going on right now. What do we do to fix it? The thing we see that we need to do to fix it right now is all come together as one. We need to vote the same way. We need to show our presence. First off, we need to make them count the goddamn fishermen. How many fishermen are actually fishing? They don't even know. We gotta force them to get the. We gotta force them. Money in the bucket helps. That that's gonna get people there absolutely. And this money is definitely not going to anything other than to help start the fight. We're gonna get a. We're gonna get a bus. Yes, sir. No Louisiana trips with that. Appreciate it, guys. This wasn't not the intent of it, but this is going to help get people to the meeting. Hey, listen. I need people to ride on this bus that we're going to go. You asked, hey, you asked how it can help? I need people to ride the bus. We're going to get a bus for about 80 people. Who can ride the bus? If you can't put anything in the hat, ride the bus. We're going to pay for you a trip to go to Alabama. That's what this is for right now. So y'all are in on helping. If you put money in the bucket, put money in the bucket. If not, we need you to ride the bus we're going to get. How's that sound? Yeah, and if you, if you see some way, you can help other than that. Also, listen, we got some shirts right now. $20 a piece, you can get a shirt. Snapper Lives Matter. Check this out. It's got our name on the bottom. Angler Defense Initiative. So, uh, the proceeds of the shirt sales go into the uh, this bucket right here. So uh, if you want to get a shirt, we got those right here, $20 a piece. Come get you a shirt. 
And if you can help out and ride on this bus that we're going to charter, I need people riding the bus. Yes, sir. Uh, I hope this goes different. Yeah. Yes, sir. We got some triples. We got big. We got big sizes. Don't worry. It fits me. Yeah. Perfect. You got it. We got them right there. There's only 50 shirts here tonight, but we will have more. If you want to get them, they're probably gonna sell out quick. But we do got them. All right. Anyway, uh, definitely. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I uh, really appreciate y'all being here. It's been amazing. Hey, we're going to be emailing out a 10-point uh, plan on what we're hoping to get some feedback from you guys on what we're uh, be proposing. So that's how we can get the information to you and, and get the feedback from you. Thank you.